In the last video, we used the criteria for aromaticity to see that heterocycles can be aromatic too. In this video, we're going to look at more aromatic heterocycles, specifically five-membered rings. And so we'll start with pyrrole right down here. So the pyrrole molecule, as you can see, five atoms in the ring. And if we take a look at the carbons in the ring, we can see that those carbons all have a double bond to them. Therefore, each of those carbons is sp2 hybridized, meaning each of the carbons has a free p orbital. So I can go ahead and draw a free p orbital on each of those four carbons like that. In terms of the nitrogen on the ring, I need to know the hybridization state of this nitrogen. So the best way to do that is to calculate the steric number. So we know the steric number is equal to the number of sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs of electrons. And so I can see that here is a sigma bond, here is a sigma bond, and here is a sigma bond. So three sigma bonds plus lone pairs of electrons. There's one lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen there. So the steric number should be equal to four, which would imply an an sp3 hybridization state for pyrrole. So we know that's not the case because pyrrole is an aromatic molecule and sp3 hybridized nitrogen would mean no p orbitals at that nitrogen which would violate the first criterion for this compound to be aromatic. And so there must be some way to get that nitrogen to be sp2 hybridized. And of course we saw how to do that in the end of the last video. This lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen is actually not localized to this nitrogen. We can take this lone pair of electrons and move them in here so that lone pair of electrons can participate in resonance. So if those lone pairs of electrons move into there to form a pi bond, that would kick these electrons off onto this carbon. So the resonance structure will have nitrogen with a pi bond here now and a lone pair of electrons on this carbon, which would give this carbon a negative one formal charge. We still have we still have a pi bond over here like that. And this nitrogen now would have a plus one formal charge. Now when we analyze the hybridization state of this nitrogen, we can see that once again we're going for sigma bonds. So one sigma bond, two sigma bonds, three sigma bonds. So three sigma bonds. This time no lone pairs of electrons because that lone pair of electrons is now delocalized in resonance. And so three plus zero is of course three, meaning that this nitrogen is now sp2 hybridized. Since that nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, it has a free p orbital. So we can go ahead and draw the p orbital on that nitrogen. And so you could think about, you could think about in terms of dot structure, right? So these two, uh, these two electrons over here, right? These two electrons are actually delocalized and participate in resonance. So that lone pair of electrons you could think about as occupying a p orbital here, and they're actually delocalized, right? So we have all these, all these pi electrons delocalized throughout our ring. And so let's go ahead and check the, the criteria for aromaticity. So pyrrole does contain a ring of continuously overlapping p orbitals. And it does have 4n plus 2 pi electrons in that ring. So let's go ahead and highlight those, right? So we had these pi electrons, so that's 2. These pi electrons, so that's 4. And then these pi electrons here in magenta are actually delocalized in the ring. So that gives us 6 pi electrons. So if n is equal to 1, 4 times 1 plus 2 gives me 6 pi electrons. So pyrrole has 6 pi electrons and also has a ring of continuously overlapping p orbitals. So we can say that it is aromatic. Let's go ahead and look at um, another molecule here. So similar to it, this is imidazole. And so for imidazole, once again, we have the same sort of situation that we had for pyrrole with this nitrogen right here. So at first, it looks like that nitrogen might be sp3 hybridized but we can draw a resonance structure for it. So we can take these electrons in here and move them in here, which will kick these electrons off onto that top nitrogen. So let's go ahead and draw the resonance structure for that. So we would have some pi electrons here. We would have a double bond here. We would now have a plus one formal charge on this nitrogen. And we would have a negative one formal charge on this top nitrogen right here like that. So once again, we've seen that this nitrogen in blue, it's actually sp2 hybridized. Right? So let me go ahead and highlight it in blue over here on the right. This nitrogen is actually sp2 hybridized, so it's the exact same situation that we saw in pyrrole, which at first it looks like those electrons might be localized to that nitrogen. Those electrons are actually not. Those electrons are delocalized in the ring because of the possible resonance structure.
And so we've determined that that nitrogen in blue that's bonded to that hydrogen is sp2 hybridized. So over here, I can go ahead and identify that nitrogen in blue that's bonded to the hydrogen. It's sp2 hybridized, therefore it has a p orbital like that. So I can go ahead and draw the p orbital on that nitrogen. If I look at the carbons, if I look at the carbons in this molecule, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these carbons in red here. So these three carbons of my original dot structure, we can see they have a double bond to them. So those are all sp2 hybridized. So I can go ahead and draw and the p orbital on those carbons as well. And then once again, going back to the original dot structure, and this time looking at the nitrogen, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw this one in magenta. So this nitrogen right here, if I look at this first dot structure, it's just like the example in pyridine that we saw in the last video, right? So it's actually sp2 hybridized. And since it's sp2 hybridized, we can think about these electrons in here in magenta as participating resonance, and the electrons in blue here here as being localized to that nitrogen atom, localized to an sp2 hybridized orbital. And so I can go ahead and identify this nitrogen in magenta over here. So I'm saying this nitrogen is in magenta. I can say that it is sp2 hybridized. It's the same situation as pyridine. So I can go ahead and draw a p orbital on it. <clears throat> and that lone pair of electrons in blue that's on that nitrogen, that lone pair of electrons occupies, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in blue, that lone pair of electrons is going to occupy an sp2 hybridized orbital on that nitrogen. So those electrons are not involved in resonance. Those electrons are localized to that nitrogen. And so when we go ahead and think about the criteria for aromaticity, right, our first criteria are, all right, we have a, uh, we have overlapping p orbitals here. And so I can see that that is the case, right? We have overlapping p orbitals. Uh, everything is sp2 hybridized in our ring. And of course, we also need four n plus two pi electrons. And so let me go ahead and label those in magenta. So my pi electrons, right, going back to my original dot structure, here's two, right, here's four. And then this lone pair on our nitrogen, right, those are actually, those are actually pi electrons. When we think about this resonance structure here. So I'm like going to, go going to go ahead and label them in magenta again. So there actually are six pi electrons in the imidazole molecule. And those pi electrons are delocalized around this ring, around these overlapping p orbitals. And so the imidazole molecule is aromatic as well. So the imidazole molecule is actually extremely important in biochemistry. So let's take a look at a famous molecule that contains the imidazole ring. And this molecule is called histamine, which anyone who has allergies has heard of of histamine, and you can see the imidazole ring over here in the left on the histamine molecule. So if you want to understand biochemistry, it's very useful to understand these concepts found in organic chemistry. And so histamine would be an example of a biological aromatic heterocycle. This portion of the molecule, the imidazole ring, is aromatic. It satisfies the two criteria as we have seen. So let's do, uh, let's do one more example of an aromatic heterocycle here. This time, let's look at an example that has sulfur in it. So this molecule is called thiophene. And this, uh, and, thiophy, and, and this is really the sulfur analog to the pyrrole, mo pyrrole molecule that we studied. So let's start by analyzing the sulfur in terms of its steric number, right? So I'm gonna look at this sulfur right here. I'm gonna calculate the steric number of that sulfur. So number of sigma bonds to that atom. So here's a sigma bond and here's a sigma bond. So we have steric numbers equal to number of sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs of electrons. So we have two lone pairs of electrons around that sulfur like that. So so that would be two plus two, which is equal to four, which implies that that sulfur is sp3 hybridized. But that doesn't work for our concept of, of aromaticity because in order for something to be aromatic, our atom needs to be sp2 hybridized so it has a free p orbital, just like, just like these carbons right here. So once again, these carbons all have a double bond to them, so those carbons all have a p orbital. So I can go ahead and sketch in those uh, those p orbitals on those carbons like that. So this, this sulfur looks like it's sp3 hybridized, but of course it's going to be a similar example to the pyrrole molecule. I can show a resonance structure for this thiophene molecule. I can take one of these lone pairs of electrons, I'm going to say it's the lone pair on the right here, and I could show them moving in to form a pi bond between the sulfur and this carbon, which would of course kick these electrons off onto that carbon. And so when I go ahead and draw this resonance structure, right, so now 
now there's a pi bond between the sulfur and this carbon. Lone pair of electrons moved out onto this carbon, giving that carbon a negative one formal charge. There was still a lone pair of electrons, uh, still a pi bond, I should say, over here. And there was still a lone pair of electrons left on this sulfur. So now, we can also give the sulfur a plus one formal charge, and we can analyze it in terms of its steric number. So once again, number of sigma bonds. So this is a sigma bond, this is a sigma bond, and so the steric number would be equal to two plus, how many lone pairs of electrons? Now there's only one, so two plus one is equal to three. So now we can see that it's actually sp2 hybridized. So it has three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and one of those sp2 hybrid orbitals is going to contain that lone pair of electrons in blue there. So that lone pair of electrons. And again, it's sp2 hybridized, which means it has two other sp2 hybrid orbitals. And those hybrid orbitals are forming bonds with those carbons there. Since it's sp2 hybridized, it also has an unhybridized p orbital. P orbital. So I can go ahead and draw in that unhybridized p orbital. And so I could think about one of those lone pairs of electrons on my original dot structure occupying a p orbital. So let's go back here and look at look at the thiophene original dot structure I drew. I could think about one of these lone pair of electrons. I'm going to mark it in magenta as occupying a p orbital. So I can go ahead and put it in there like that. And I could think about the other lone pair of electrons on that dot structure as occupying an sp2 hybridized orbital out to the side. So whenever you see this sort of situation, think about where those lone pairs of electrons actually are. And so I also have these as being pi electrons and these as being pi electrons. So two, four, six. A total of six pi electrons, which is Huckel's number, delocalized throughout our ring, throughout our overlapping p orbitals. And so we can say that the thiophene molecule is aromatic. It satisfies both of the criteria for this. And so there are, of course, analogs to thiophene using oxygen. And that's, of course, a similar situation. And you can draw other resonance structures, but I just wanted to draw this one to show that one of those lone pairs is actually delocalized and involved in resonance, and one of those lone pairs is actually localized to the sulfur atom and localized in an sp2 hybridized orbital. So this is how to analyze um, aromatic heterocycles.